We bring together for you the best photographers in the world. My career of photography, I've, I've been, I suppose I've been motivated by curiosity. I think the 60s was a special decade for me because I was lucky in, in that I was in that group of inner sanctum. I've obviously worked with a lot of famous people, celebrity type people, etc. I found that photographing well-known people, because you're linking the fact that they're well-known to what they're doing, always interesting, always interesting, and I would always do it. And the 60s were good because it was really the beginning of it. It was actually a little bit earlier than that. It was late 50s, I, I sense. Um, and of course it was great fun because we all knew each other. You know, and a fashion photographer, you know, like Bailey or something, would, would chat with me or McCullen, etc. There was no thing about, you know, McCullen wouldn't turn around to Bailey and say, oh God, you're just a fashion photographer, you, you know. And I found that all very refreshing, you know. I became quite interested in the film. So I did a little bit on Dr. No, and they said, oh, we've got to get some poster pictures. The film was made either, I can, can never remember whether it was Shepperton or Pinewood, but, but anyway, it was made in a studio which was like an hour and a half drive out of London. So we were in my small little studio where I lived. I lived in a studio. And there was Cubby Broccoli, the head of United Artists there, and Sean Connery, and about seven young ladies, and, and um, y you know, ev everybody, the big man. And Tom came up to me and he said, David, he said, I don't know what we're going to do. He said, I've forgotten the gun. And you said, we said, oh, God, if we drive out there, it'll be three flipping hours before we start, you know. So it happened that I enjoyed target shooting but with an air pistol. And it happened that the air pistol I had is a Walther air pistol. And it had a beautiful box with Walther written on the outside of it. So I said to Tom, look, although it's an air pistol, it's got a great big long barrel, you know, whereas his is a little, you know, nobody here'll know. The mere fact it's got Walther written on the box, they'll all think it's the right one. So I said, all you've got to do is in the after work, you know, when they come to do the poster, they just cut off the barrel and put new the sights on it. It'll be okay, you, you know. Um, so anyway, there's Sean Connery standing there with his air pistol. Then, of course, when they come to do the poster art, they forgot to say, you have to lop the barrel off the pistol. So if you look at all those posters, he's standing there with an air pistol. So there is Mr. Macho with his air pistol. You know. The nature of photography is that you have to be there to do it. You can't do it over a telephone or you can't write it up or anything. You have to actually be there physically, whether it be a place you want to go to or a person you want to meet. Now the higher the ladder you get, the more chance you have of meeting the people you want to meet, etc., etc. And that's very, you know, it's a great privilege for that. And so I, I think it's sacrosanct. I, I think you have to respect your subject matter and, and do the best you can in the circumstance. But the best you can is, is to record them as perhaps in 30 years' time you will look back and you. It's the memory of them. So all the time when I'm shooting that sort of thing, I want to, I want to link to the memory I have. And if I can capture that in the picture, if the picture links to my memory of it, then it's worth. So, so uh, I ended up working with Dick Lester, who is the director of um, the Beatles film. And one day we were in Abbey Road, and the four of them were around the piano looking at the script, in, in, in fact. And of course, not only did you have, you have to get the four of them together, but you have to be able to recognize the four of them at, in, in at least one picture. And so I have this picture, but it's one of the only pictures that I actually have of the four of them together, of which you can see all four people. It's very strange. I mean, I always had this theory that kind of off 
professionalism. I, I wasn't absolutely certain that they really liked each other that much. What camera do I use? Well, it, to be honest, it really doesn't matter that much. I mean, right from the word go in photography, all a camera was was a box with a hole in the front. If you want to do like I do, which is in the main, photograph people reacting to each other in some loving or hating sort of way, but it has some emotional sort of thing, there's not much point in having a great big uh, 10 by 8 camera around because you can't do that. You, you, you can move to where you want to be if you've got a little camera. So in my case, I need a little camera. If on the other hand, you're trying to take pictures like um, some of the early, you know, Watkins or some of, the, some of the early great landscape photographers, it's silly to have a little camera, which by definition can't give you that kind of quality. You have a bigger camera. So, so the rules are very simple. Pop festivals, you know, are, are, are wonderful. Lots of people go to them. But the Isle of Wight was probably the first of the big ones. But it was lovely, it was lovely, because it had a wonderful atmosphere about it. And, and it, what was very surprising to me was the, the, the range of ages. I mean, there really were babies there with their mothers, but at the, other, at the other end, there was like, you know, 60, 70 year old people all enjoying it. It was an extraordinary sense of togetherness. And I love, it's almost my favorite thing. I love togetherness. I love people getting on with each other. I love people touching each other. Look magazine, American magazine, very good, uh, wanted uh, me to do something on Julie Christie. And, and so we persuaded her that I could for over a period of about a month, just wander around with her wherever she went. And what was lovely about her was that, you know, she really did, she, she went on the underground and, and I just shot my normal sort of pictures out of it. And, and uh, you know, the, the pictures in the book are, I think, show that side of her. Basically, in photography, there's just two controls. One is where do you stand and one is when do you press the button. So if you stand in the right place and you press the button at the right time, you're going to be okay you know, but obviously it takes a little bit of experience to know where to stand, you know, and it takes pretty good observation to know when to press the button at the right time. But it is that simple, that's the reality. I think the important thing about a picture is the content. That, that's, that's what you're looking at, you know, and, and to me it's important that I can kind of read that content. I don't need two pages of text telling me how I'm supposed to look at the picture. You know, we're, we're photographers. What is extraordinary about these cameras now is that they really can take pictures out of, in virtually any light at all. I mean, boy oh boy, it's so much easier now than it used to be. You, you know, when you had to put film in developer and sort of cook it for about <laughs> all overnight to try to get something out of it. And, and now you just press it and there it is. I mean, I can't believe it. I, can't, I really here cannot see you because the light is in my eye. And I look at this picture and I can see you. It's a nice camera and, and it, it's all I need is just, you know, one little camera and a lens. And, and good shoes. One of the things I always say to students, they always say, what's the most important thing in photography? And I say, wear good shoes. If you're going to work, walk 12 hours a day, you better have good shoes. <laughs>